Welcome to Community Mean Mistakes, episode number two. I am going to be talking about even more mean mistakes that you guys have said you've made. I put out a uh, post on one of my Facebook groups and said, hey, what are some mean mistakes that you guys have made? And I have some results. So let me go ahead and uh, talk about them. I'll of course mention my own mean mistakes because I definitely make my fair share, but I figure we can all learn from each other in this time. So going down this list, we have first James Snyder. He says, adding way too much metabisulfite to fruit uh, that I was using lysosome to break down, had to pump a ton of CO2 through it to get it to gas it to off gas it all and get my fermentation to start. So, yeah, he's talking about how you're, before you put the um, fruit in, you're essentially just overloading it with some chemicals, and those chemicals can fight the yeast. And it's it's like if you were trying to make a mead with um, a juice that has potassium sorbate in it, is it possible for the uh, yeast to eat some of those sugars? Yes, but you basically have two battles happening. So, I understand that completely. Uh, Dane Coleman, he says, Put whole, uh, put whole strawberries in, in primary and didn't leave enough headspace. A strawberry blocked the airlock while I was at work on the third day. It built up a lot of pressure and when the, when the airlock blew, uh, it shot a huge ma mess everywhere, even hit the ceiling. That's pretty epic. Um, you know, I, I can't say I've had that happen before where something got in the airlock. I've had lots of things like, maybe I haven't had any big masses like that come through the airlock and uh, Definitely had that happen. I've had like a cork blow out of something before, but I've never had I've never had a true bottle bomb where like a glass exploded. I've also never had something like that happen. Uh, Michael Caperso, he says, not degassing before adding my staggered nutrient additions to a fermenting mead in a carboy. Think old faithful. I have definitely done this one before. Uh, whenever you're putting your stuff into like if you're adding nutrients in um in the beginning stages of a fermentation lots of times there is a ton of degassing that needs to happen before you can add nutrient nutrient is a way of degassing but the yeast gets super excited and just foam up they spit out co2 it turns into a huge mess so if you are using um <laughs> if you're using nutrient make sure you do that it's pretty rough. Uh, Nine Tails Lutz, he says, take your sweet time before bottling as to not get sediment afterwards. That's also very true. I've made some meads and um, just tried to bottle them real quick or just bought or I bottled them improperly kind of and ended up with a fair, you know, amount of sediment at the bottom, which is, you know, not the worst thing in the world, but if it takes up a lot of your brew, then that's kind of in the way of things. You don't really want that. Uh, Natalie India says, thinking our second batch died, but is really finished after two weeks and we restarted it. It was an unreal adventure of I don't knows. We ended up making it a pineapple jalapeno and it's the best and so delish. Happy accidents. Um, hope you don't, oh, that's so nice. Thank you. And there's a nice picture of her with her brew. That's so sweet. This is why I like this community. Um, yeah, that's funny. The John Moore, he says, I recently made my first batch of vinegar. I had just had, I had a slow fermentation and thought aerating would be okay since I just, since it was just before the one third sugar break. I was wrong. Um, yeah, I, uh, I think you can add, I know this, you can add oxygen into your fermentation. Um, however, it, if you add too much, it, you can add too much before, um, or in the primary, I should say, I'm trying to mix that around. You can make vinegar pretty easily if you're not careful. So just be careful with that. Um, don't add too much, too much oxygen. Joshua McMahon, McMahon, I don't know how you say that. Uh, degassing a cap smell in old days into primary without enough headspace, what we talked about earlier. Not only did it make a huge mess, I was also not wearing gloves. Let's just say it was a hot mess seven whole jalapeno seeds, man. Yeah, so uh, I've definitely made the mistake of trying to, uh, people do this all the time, you're cutting up a jalapeno or a pepper and then you touch your face and next thing you know your face is on fire. I've done it on a video before, not fun, but um, that's a double whammy. 
with him making a huge mess doing the degassing thing we talked about earlier and then also like jalapeno on your face. Michelle Borland, she says, not, uh, not me, but wine. I tried using yeast from a previous batch that was stored in the fridge for a few weeks. Uh, it did nothing, so I added 71B. Now it's milky, soupy, foamy, foamy mess that I have to pitch. Um, uh, so I guess she just added too much yeast and it got pretty thick. Or wait, I guess I'm a little confused, but I can see, yeah. Tommy Gardner, he says, bottled after two days of no activity. In secondary, five days later, had corks shooting out of bottles. Um, there is a lot of degassing that still happens in post-secondary, so you do have to give it some time. Um, if I, I, I've had this happen before. I suggest that if you're going to make a mead um, or wine or beer, and, well, I guess beer is a little different. If you're making a wine or a mead, make sure that you degas pretty clearly so you don't have to worry about um, that after carbonation you know being affected because um, it, it does it does still create pressure which is unfortunate and then you think you've done something wrong in reality um, it just didn't degas all the way so just degas lightly Kevin Gallagher he says largest mistake was not upsizing five gallon carboys and now 14 and now 14 gallon conical sooner once you have the routine down and favorite recipes, it's so much easier to do large batches. I definitely agree with that. Once you get something you like down, um, try to make it again. Of course, we go ahead and make some other different meads. That's awesome. However, I would highly suggest that you take and uh, try to make it again, make it better. I'm on like iteration, I think eight now of my Apple uh, man-made sizer, as I call it, and I'm still trying to perfect it. I think I've got it to a good point, but I'll keep doing it till I make it great. Nicholas Hess, he says, was making a braggot from second, uh, running, sec second running of a beer I made. I just had switched, uh, I just had switched off to using a spray bottle instead of a large bucket of sanitizer. Totally forgot to sanitize the glass carboy. Now I have a sour braggot, and I'm not sure if that's driven from the mash or lack of sanitization. Yeah, I can't quite say in that instance, but it sounds like it could have been a, um, you know, a bad bacteria. There are so many stories of this, of people not completely sanitizing well and ending up with a product that has something wrong with it. And it's, it's only natural. Bacteria are like microscopic. So if you just pick up a glass that you think is clean and then you put something in it, there's still a good chance that unless you've actually cleaned out that glass well right before it, that there's bacteria. Same thing goes for buckets and glass carboys and all of that stuff. Andrew Nicholson, he says, I would say making the lovely stuff in the first place was my mistake because it's so addictive. Uh, on a more sensible note, leaving two sticks of cinnamon in my mix for over a month. Um, to his first point, definitely make your first mead. If you're watching this video and you've never made a mead, it's time. Go do it. Super simple. Uh, I'll even throw a recipe right here for you. So follow that recipe. Mix all your ingredients, throw your yeast in, and you'll have yourself a pretty good product. Um, his second point, two sticks of cinnamon in the mix for a month. Uh, depends on how much your mix was. Two cinnamon sticks to me is enough to flavor uh, um, two gallons. So I've left a cinnamon stick in for, you know, uh, two months before and been okay. I have also left a cinnamon stick in something for 12 months one time. And that was quite the treat because it was an apple mead and I put a cinnamon stick in, forgot about the cinnamon stick, let it sit for over a year basically, and found the cinnamon stick when I bottled. And it was very cinnamony, which was interesting. Last one, John Beard, he says, my mistake was not making enough to keep up with my consumption habits. Another point, if you haven't made a mead, go do it. Um, the best way to combat the patient's side of mead making is to make more mead. And it seems really silly, but it's like watching paint dry. If you're painting a room and you go to paint another room, you're gonna kind of forget about the previous room for a second there. So same thing for mead making, you make a gallon, finish that one, let it sit, start another gallon, you'll stop thinking about this one and you'll be able to uh, be a little more patient. So my mean mistakes that I've made recently, 
I, um, I have two main ones. Number one is I recently bought some new honey. I was pouring it into a, um, a container and ended up uh, getting, well, I got some on the side of the honey container. Didn't quite clean it well enough. And in this room, I literally had hundreds of ants just crawling around to get to the honey that was there. And that was totally my fault. I goofed big time. So I had to um, pull everything out, spray it down, clean up the area, fight off the ants, and they are pesky little things. So if you can avoid ants, do it. Make sure you clean up your honey bucket well if you do that, and you clean up your stuff in general. Same thing for the floor. I've had lots of instances where my, my meat is splashed, and I've had puddles, and next thing I know, there's ants. So that's that was um, one of mine. The second one actually just happened two days ago. I have had this really nice two-gallon glass carboy. Oh, not really carboy, glass jar, I should say. And uh, I'd used it for holding mead for a while, and then I, I started to use it for holding my sanitizing things. Well, I screwed the cap onto it, and I was putting it away for something, and I guess I screwed the cap too tight because I couldn't get the cap off, and the next thing I know, I was sitting here, and I heard a crack and there was a huge crack that had developed down the side of it because I think I screwed the cap on, or the lid on, too tight. And so that was unfortunate. I've also broken many glass carboys and done that. It's really, really unfortunate. So those are some of the mead mistakes that I've made, we've made, maybe you've made some similar ones recently. I would love to know down in the comments, what are some mead mistakes that you've made? Um, it's, it's not bad to make mead mistakes. In fact, I think we learn more from our mistakes than we do our successes often. So share your own mead mistake down below. And um, if you want to be a part of the kind of polling group that I use for this and some other videos, go check out the Facebook. This is, it's facebook.com um, slash manmade mead. There's also a group on Facebook called Man Made Mead Makers. And you can uh, request to join that. I will go ahead and tell you, uh, I'm the moderator admin on it and I see the people who try to join. If you don't answer the questions for the membership questions, which are really simple things, I won't let you in because I've had lots of bots and spam try and come in and it's kind of a pain. So answer the questions. Thanks for watching. Uh, this has been episode number two. Of course, there will be episode three in the future, maybe four. There's no shortage of mead mistakes that we can make, but there's also no shortage of mead successes that we will have in the future. So learn from our mistakes and I hope you have a happy time brewing. See you next time. Cheers.